podcast live. video is live. Bam. Okay, here we go. Theme music. <clears throat> Hitting record. Okay, now we are running the promo. I'm Daniel. Oh, it's choking. And I'm George Whitman. Oh, it's choking big time. Some joke audio body shop. shop. This week it's our quarterly audio masters roundtable. Join us now as you'll be able to ask questions. Little H two sixty four there. Of our great guests who be this moment. We've got Roy Yokelson. The only thing I didn't get a chance to Juan test was Carlos Hangouts. Bagnell and Mike Varela. I just turned off the All local hard disk recording, so and if you have a question, even though George so I can't and I know capture it locally, it'll just be captured these on YouTube. These guys know just That's as fine. much. We debate the issues, and we talk about it, and we have that a great broke, time. That was so a straw. join us live Monday night, 9 back. o'clock in the East. And 6 o'clock in the West. And join us in the chat room. We'll see okay, you I can fly that in there. later. Who cares? He's the home voiceover studio engineer. <laughs> CPU of the stars is bouncing between Los 95 and 99 percent. <laughs> whose knowledge of the latest recording gear is second to none. He's a voice actor and the home studio master, hailing from Buffalo, New York. His home studio skills and knowledge of voiceover recording is unmatched. When Dan the music and sounds George extra reverbery, reverby, and the talk continues. I added a little reverb to it. Yeah. West Audio Body Shop. And now, live from his high-tech facility in Santa Monica right. and so his what studio Corbo. in Buffalo, here are George Whittem right, two and two shot Dan of me Leonard. and Dan, hopefully. I'll go right to you, Dan. Here we go. Three, okay. two, one. Hi, I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East-West oh. Audio Body Shop. Oh. What was that other one? Oh, that was me. <laughs> oh, okay. That was funny. Just trying to figure that one out. Well, good evening, everybody. <laughs> it's, it's yes, it's it's our quarterly weirdness. Um, it's uh, it's going to be our Audio Masters Roundtable tonight. Uh, now, first off, it's Thanksgiving week and Thanksgivingica for for some of us, and I know a lot of you may be traveling. This is a really good week to stay home and have Thanksgiving at your house because there's this storm flying across the Midwest and into the east, and we're going to get five to seven inches of snow here, and it's just going to be a mess. So <laughs> stay where you are. As the former mayor of Buffalo, Jimmy Griffin, used to say, you just grab a six-pack and hang out. Yeah, that's <sighs> the, the day tonight, I'll tell you. Yes. That's what we're doing here. That's what we're doing. So we're going to make your evening just a little bit more pleasant because we're going to answer all of your questions along with talking about a couple of things that we want to talk about uh, here on East West Audio Body Shop. So why don't we introduce our guests? We still have a few people we're waiting on, but the important people are here, the ones that knew they had to be here on time. Let's go from, <laughs> from left to right. Joining us from Dallas, Texas, where you guys got some freezing rain today, I guess. No, uh, it didn't actually freeze. We were hoping it's real cold outside. It's probably hitting around 31, 32 right now. Ooh, that's cold. And it's a wet, <laughs> damp cold, and it's nasty, and it's a perfect place to be sitting at home in your studio on eWabs. So, Absolutely. So I'm well, warm and happy and glad to be here. Thank you, guys. Cliff Zellman, welcome to the show. Next to George, we already know who he is. Juan Carlos Bagnell, some audio guy. That's me. That's I'm you. totally yeah. that guy. That's, you. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. That's totally what's happening right now. All right. Yeah, you're a little bit off, but uh, <laughs> but who amongst us isn't? Anyway, right. excuse the phone. It's just my mother-in-law calling constantly. Again? Um, again. Wow. God only knows what's going on. She well, there's loves tra you. She's trying hello, to get out to Denver Dan. for Thanksgiving, and you know, for some reason we're her travel agent. Um, but Juan, welcome back to the show. Glad to be back, guys. We're going to have a great time with you tonight. And next to him, of course, everybody's favorite relative, Uncle Roy Yokelson. Yay, the birthday boy. Hey, everybody. Is it your, well, he was a couple weeks ago. What were you, 29 for the third like, time? Fourth 39. time? 39. 39. Yeah. All right. I didn't want to take another, it, it took me into another decade. We had five parties 
Wow. <laughs> Five. And I didn't get to any one of them. Um, but I did yeah. wish you a happy birthday. You did. You did. Right. Is that, was that one of your gifts that you got there, that golden thing in front of you? Or... It, oh, yeah. Somebody got me this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a heavy, blunt object. <laughs> It oh, always oh. ends up in the show. It, it, it just, it's just, you know, it, it's always there. If you hold it this way, it's very dangerous. You could poke your eye out. I you know. run with it. You know, yeah, we'll get it stuck in your chin or something. <laughs> anyway, we got we got lots to talk about tonight. And uh, if you have a question or or a comment, well, you can comment all you want, but you know, you only want questions. Uh, you're in our chat room, and there are tons of you in there. And uh, so if you want a clarification of something one of our great experts here has to say, speak up. Just type it up. So let's talk about a couple of things. Let's throw this out. One of the topics we wanted to talk about tonight, the first things, is talking about this thing that I see massive misunderstanding of, and that is the concept of noise floor. Now, you can have a messy floor, but what you can have a messy noise floor, too. I think when I, when I work with people and they send me audio that I that I'll analyze, I can clearly see stuff that is well below the signal of their voice, but highly audible, and it's something that you shouldn't have there. But let's talk. Throw this to the experts. Let's first start with you, Roy. What what do you consider an acceptable noise floor? And why don't you explain what it is? Um, well, noise floor is when you look at your when you look at your waveform, you know, when you're editing and when you're recording, it's that hopefully skinny little line that runs along the the zero axis. And if it's a fat line, you're in trouble because that's your no that's noise. That's where the noise floor is. Um, one of the easiest ways, and George talked about it uh, either last week or the week before, is to use a high pass filter. One of you guys talked about it. Uh, and and filter you know everything below 80 cycles you know yep. or six or 60 cycles depending or if you're a woman maybe even <laughs> don't maybe even, even 90 or 100. go there well no because the deepness the richness oh, okay. and deepness of, of our voices um, they don't have that so um, if you can filter all that stuff which is your ceiling fan uh, a truck passing by and just general uh, tr air travel hitting your di diaphragm on the microphone, uh, once you filter that out, you'll have a cleaner noise floor. Yeah, floor have, noise floor, it's I a should. graphical representation of a waveform in SoundForge and showing. Uh, well, oh, so, yeah. so, so if you guys are, are taking a look, especially on like the Hangout, uh, being able to see where your noise floor actually is, uh, you typically have to do sort of a a zoom in just to kind of catch what you might be. Uh, yeah, there you oh, go. I have a little yeah, uh, offset yeah. too. That's, that's, that's pretty bad. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah. also coming in at like negative yeah. sixty. So yeah, and you're magnifying, you know, three thousand times. Right. Right. But it's there, and you can usually hear it. Now, the funny thing about a noise floor is that you know sometimes it's it's you can see it. But it seems to be it's at less audible frequencies, or you know, it, there are things that are more prominent than others. Uh, a low frequency rumble may not be obvious to you, but it's there. I had a client last week. Um, we were having that problem, and I he had a Sterling mic, and I said, "Is there a bass roll off on there?" And he goes, "You mean this thing?" And he flips it. Done. It's gone. <laughs> and that was the end of that. You but, know, when, yeah. Oh, Go I'm ahead, sorry. Cliff. Go ahead. When, You're on. When, when we talk about noise flow, let's not. Also, uh, there's really two kinds. There's your environment noise floor, and then there's introduced electronics noise floor. Um, if you've got a bad cable, if you're mismatched, if you have a bad ground, um, you could be introducing electronic hum. And so I think the first thing, if you do have a noise problem, or you think you do, try to isolate it and see which one it is. Is it an acoustic problem? Do you have, like Dan was saying, ceiling fan or computer fan, or is it something in your lines? And uh, to me, I, I would much rather fix something in the lines than fix something in the environment because it's usually, uh, you know, uh, you can zero in on it. Uh, oh, see, and I'm, I'm very much the opposite. I'd rather fix something in the environment. Like, I can remove a fan and you're just going to sweat more than trying to find 
Like, is it the bad ground? Is it, you know, some weird, like a, like a power strip that's not really yeah. doing its job properly? That kind of stuff really wigs me out when you start getting, especially for how dirty California electrical can be. Yeah, see, you're um, in California. I'm in Texas. That kind of wigs me out. We don't like to sweat in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like to sweat in California either. That's why we moved to California. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, well, that's and I I would tend to agree with that. That you know, removing the noises physically is your number one priority because the less electronics you use, the better. George, yeah, I tend to lean towards that, but it, as because I am the scales, I am Libra. It's all about a balance, you know. You, yes. We're not going to achieve perfection in either way, so I always look at first what is the most cost-effective thing you can fix first, and then go downhill from there. So. If it's buzz from a bad cable, start there. Then if you fix that, then you'll now you're going to hear the noise from that computer fan. Once you move that out of the room or change computers or close Google Chrome with 38 tabs and YouTube playing in the background and the fan starts slowing down and gets quiet, once you figure that out, it's something else. And it, that's the way it is with noise. You, the louder noise masks the quieter noise. And as you keep going, you keep finding the quieter thing and the quieter thing and the quieter thing. So, and those quieter things get progressively more expensive. Yeah, I was going to say, for me, at, once you start cresting, in, in a home studio, not like in a properly treated studio, but in a home studio, once you're cresting like negative 70 and below, that wow. you're, you're starting to fight diminishing returns pretty yeah. heavily. Yeah. yeah, that is exceptional. Yeah, I mean, what do you guys can... We've talked about this for Lovo, but what is good noise floor? 55 to 60. Well, that's yeah, I excellent. 60, I think at 60 you're doing fine. I mean, if you yeah. can get it down to 60 in a home, yeah. you know, yeah. like you're you're doing better than most. Yeah. yeah but even at 50, as long as there aren't distracting elements to the noise, and as long as there, you're not doing that obnoxious gating trick where the noise is only under your voice and then it goes mm -hmm. to pure silence afterwards, right. then I, for most people, I, I really don't feel it's it's a it's a topic that they have to work themselves up as much as they often will. When they start discussing, like there has to be some sort of scientific reasoning behind a negative 65 dB noise floor, and I just people, don't find that to be true, and especially in my line of work. People start inserting silence over what would normally be room tone that has totally acceptable minus 60, and then that you hear. Yeah. You know, even that's if you jarring. Don't, yeah, if it goes to absolute silence, and and no no client really wants that. Certainly not the audiobook uh, publishers. Oh, clearly well, not and audiobooks. After, yeah. And after yeah. about 20 seconds, like for me in commercials, after about 20 seconds if you're doing a 60-second audition, um, I've acclimated. But if you keep turning off the noise, going down to pure silence, and then turning it back on, you're going to keep reminding me that it's there. But if yeah. there's a constant sound under your audition, if there's constant room vibe under your audition, I'm going to ignore it because chances are I'm probably listening on like my laptop speakers anyway. So so to beat yourself up about all of this is is really kind of a silly... Uh, and and I think a losing proposition, especially in terms of ROI for your yeah, commercial, yeah. your average commercial voiceover endeavor. Well, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Not all noise is obviously not all noise is created equal. So sometimes you get a minus 55 and it sounds fantastic, and yeah. sometimes you get a minus 55, but the noise that's prominent is well into the mid range to upper range, the the area that's the it, most prominent to your ears. Yeah, if it's hiss or something, that's going to be terrible. Yeah, oh, yeah. if it's oh, young. Yeah. If it's rumble creating that noise no problem, all of a sudden a high pass filter and you can go from minus forty to minus sixty like yeah. that just by adding a high pass filter. Yeah. Yeah. And proper use of range, you know, on a uh, somebody who's knows how to use the noise gate well, instead of bringing that range down to minus eighty, bring it down to minus right. thirty, minus right. twenty. You know. Yeah. Um, Follow the rules of ADSR. If anybody's watching this and they don't know what that is, that is <laughs> attack, sustain, decay, and release. And that's everything that we hear. So if you have too fast of an attack, too fast of a release, you're going to hear it. So it's massaging. You know, it's it's working it. And, well, and, so we're not talking about not gating. It shut. You're, you're, we're ducking. You obviously use ducking or gating or downward yeah. expansion, uh, Cliff, yeah. you like oh, air conditioning. Sure. But um, what do you guys use? I, I like a setting that's around... Attack like under 10 milliseconds and a release around minus 80 to 100 and a ratio yeah. of maybe 2 to 1, something like that. What do you guys use? Yeah. Actually, that's, that's not too far off of what I use. I, I go pretty yeah, lean and too. then I'll also back it up with um, may, maybe another sort of 5 decibels off in, in noise reduction. 
you know, taking a sample of what my nose, noise floor is and maybe hitting that another 5 to 10 dB uh, on top of what I'm doing for a very, very minimal gate. And then I, from there, I get a little more room to hit some compression or something like that. Are you using Audition 1? No, actually, most of the slicing I do is SoundForge. And the Sound built-in forward. noise reduction plugin on SoundForge is fine for the, the very minimal adjustments that I'm trying to make. Right. And most adjustments that you want to make are minimal anyway. I mean, that's right. the that's the you whole point. I mean, yeah, I mean, you don't want to hear them. That's why we used to go by, we, well, we sort of still go by this, the, the standard of about minus 50. Once you get to about minus 50, you can start using these things, and they're a little bit more seamless than they are, say, if your noise floor is like at minus 45. If your noise floor yeah. is at minus 45, you've got some physical work to do on that. We, we had a couple questions here on, on this particular one. Uh, Carol Spencer Morgan asks, how do you fix something in the lines? Do you replace them? And I, I, we think she means the power lines. But have, yeah, have any yeah. of you really ever really noticed that the electrical faults in a house are going to be causing these sorts of problems? I, you know, I always yes. think that that's. You think it is, Cliff? Yeah, I do. I really do. I, I think that d depending upon what line you're tapping off of in your house, uh, sometimes you could be pulling the going off of the same AC line as something that has a generator in it. Um, yeah. Anything that has a cooling system or a fan. Um, I've noticed way back in the old days we would have a when the cleaning crew came to the studio and they would turn on wee wee we'd hear the whining. Also, if you have a um, uh, a variable lights, you can turn down a yep. dimmer. dimmer. Uh, that can create uh, noise within your line. Also, if you lay parallel. Um, audio cables with electricity, it can create an arc, so to speak. You always want to try to be uh, perpendicular. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it's important. I think you, you absolutely should have the cleanest power you possibly can. Well, and to go along with Cliff, I've been troubleshooting. For, for a lot of us, we have to record, like I'm in a condo now, but I used to live in an apartment, kind of the same problem, where I'm sharing the electrical lines with people who might be putting things like dimmer switches on their kitchen lights or something Iron like that. Iron just have to store. <laughs> exactly. You've just got to start dancing around. I've even started running yeah. into issues with, um, there's a tech called Powerline where you can run your networking equipment through your electrical sockets. So instead of having to run Ethernet cable to different parts of the room, you can run your internet signal over your electrical sockets. Ooh, well, guess yeah. what? If I no, run Powerline, I can't run my audio equipment no, on the same can't. circuit. So no. we're finding, like, even even as we get more high tech, these these problems yeah. are becoming more profound, not less yeah. profound. And right. the professional yeah. studios in the city have, uh, you know, and I think the outlets are orange for clean yes. power, where you can yeah. 30, 30 all your equipment and you won't get any of those uh, hums. Hospital power, we call it sometimes. Yeah. And they're usually running 30 amps or higher. Right. And you can buy uh, yeah. Furman power conditioning oh, devices. Sure. Uh, some of them yeah, are very expensive. Here some that really work. I bought a fifteen hundred dollar one of those for Don Lafontaine Studio years and years ago, and it didn't seem to help the fact that there was the dimmer racks for his entire house lighting system. <laughs> yeah. Eight inches. That, of that'll do it. On sale. Yeah. Those cheap dimmers will do it. They they have special dimmer dimmers that are audio friendly. Yes, big. No, didn't have those. Big ones. Big heavy. They're uh, very axe, I think. No, this is dimmer. Calling. I'm talking about one of those lighting systems where every single room in the house has an array of buttons, and you can call up some uh -huh. that kind of a lighting system. It's like at the uh -huh. Jetsons. Uh -huh. Yeah, like you know, <laughs> when you have way too much money. Real first world problem, huh? You hate <laughs> money, and you like throwing it everywhere. You know, one of those kind of a lighting yeah. system. Yeah. 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 There's also there was also that trick you taught me, George, about uh, you know reach into your you know your kitchen drawer and grab one of these guys. You know, yeah. The best 89 <laughs> cents you could ever spend. Is that a ground lifter? I'm not seeing you guys. Yes, it is a ground lifter. Boy. It's, it's, a, the it's, best, a, it's a ground lifter. And the, the best 89 cents you could possibly spend. Yes. And Go this out. one's going back in the drawer. Uh, where I came from... <laughs> There's, there's. Devox had a question about the, about the gating thing. Uh, we talked about minus sixty. When you're yes. peaking at what level? Well, you should be peaking at like minus six to minus four anyway, unless yeah. you're really driving it, right? That's yeah, six to four. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's it. All right. Keep it there, boys and girls. Yeah. Hey, item number three. Let's talk about this, Uncle Roy. You're currently producing a video on this thing, uh, talking about Bretts, because we get this all the time. And you were talking about it a little bit earlier. Uh, about no dead silence when you're when you're doing an audio book. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I think I included all of you guys on a 
on a thing that was on voiceover experts, and the guy wrote a very nice article about how proper punctuation in a script can help your recording sound very natural. And then he took that recording and removed every breath. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote to Stephanie and said, what is this, expert? And she said, yeah, we don't know why he did that. I don't know. It doesn't sound natural to us. So the big rule, all I'm going to say, without giving it all away, is don't remove. <laughs> all right, if you're doing a commercial and maybe they've overwritten the copy and there's going to be music anyway, uh, as long as you're in touch with what sounds natural, what can you get away with? You can't just remove breaths and jam it all together, or you can't remove breaths and just leave this giant piece of silence. Your ear wants to hear something. So it well, I'll, I'll, I'll go you one. I'll, I'll go you one further, Uncle Roy. Good. So, what happens in an action movie whenever the protagonist jumps underwater? It becomes silent. The audience holds their breath along <laughs> with the Ooh. protagonist. <laughs> We are attuned, psychologically speaking, to pick up on certain cues and behaviors, and there is one in which if someone in our environment is holding their breath and we don't hear them oxygenating, we're going to start to interpret that as, as having some sense of urgency. I start to hyperventilate when I hear some of these audiobooks that, that come in with no breaths. I mean, it, 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 it instills in us some sense of urgency or instills in us uh, that, that, that flight Panic. or flight panic that we have to contend with and you're psychologically creating exactly what you're probably trying not to do when you're trying to be good about cleaning up your audio so that you're presenting a clean book um, yeah. you're, you're playing with your audience's head yeah oh clearly clearly unintentionally yeah. but that's exactly what you're doing right right and we're talking mostly in long format stuff because if you're doing exactly. a 30 second spot with 45 right. seconds of copy uh, there's not going to be any breathing in there, and uh, so you've got to cut that stuff well, out. And, if, and, and what's funny is if they've overwritten the copy that much, they probably are trying to create a sense of urgency yeah, anyway, absolutely. so go for it. Yeah, Slice away. That's, and that's why you guys make the big bucks. You know, yeah, they don't exactly. have to be breathing. That's free. <laughs> the air is free. Yeah. Of course, I'm, I'm always surprised at how poorly some people are at breathing. I mean, it's, it's, like, oh, yeah. it's like singing. You've got to learn how to breathe properly. You've got to be in right. proper condition. And you should be able to read an entire sentence without taking a breath. You yeah. know what the classic example is? A producer who then transitioned into voiceovers and thinks that they've got to go and then start. Right. <laughs> right. It's crazy. Exactly. Exactly. Any thoughts on that, Clifford? Question: You you work on auto spots you know, where there's there's no breathing at all. In there. I work with the incredible non-breathing voice talents. Um, I've got anywhere from 38 to 42 seconds of copy on 50 percent of what I do. What I do is not an example of what people should do. I'm going for a specific genre, a specific sound, uh, creating that urgency. But when it comes to long form and what I think the general rule is. Uh, no breaths at the top, no breaths at the end, and don't touch anything in the middle. You know, and that's really basically Actually, it. I don't want to hear. It's a great way to sum it up, though. I like that. Yeah, I don't want to hear a <gasps> when in disgrace with fortune in men's eyes, I all the look. <laughs> you know? And then at the end, I don't want to hear. <gasps> <gasps> but in the middle, and and it's interesting what Dan said. You know, yes, you do have to train yourself, and a lot of people don't know what they sound like when they're breathing, and right. they'll go back and listen to this. This is, this is, of course, the newbie, because anybody that's been recording for any length of time, they know what they sound like. But, but you go back and you listen to a recording and you hear <sighs> all this asthmatic stuff, especially if you're <laughs> someone in my position. But, um, yeah, nothing in the front, nothing in the back, and leave it alone in the middle. I mean, the other problem is, if, if there, let's say you snuck a breath in the middle of the sentence, and that next word is gangbusters, because now you've got yeah. the energy. Well, that doesn't match... Right. You know, you ran out the of dynamics, breath and it yeah. got soft, so I've got to raise that up, lower that, and then it matches. Well, and again, is we have to be careful because every time we start talking about rules, people start taking that literally. So if you're mm -hmm. in the middle of two paragraphs in between two completely different thoughts and you take a deep cleansing breath, yeah, go ahead and clip okay. that. Yeah. That's fine, but what we're talking about is, is, is maintaining flow, maintaining vibe, and not losing the, the storyteller aspects of the story in some an unnatural way by over-editing. When again, you're working harder than you need to. You know, you don't yeah. need to go and do that to, to deliver some... a clean audiobook. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. creating I'm... something unnatural from something that's natural to start with. 
Yeah, really, and and listen to some of the top guys in the business, like you know, like uh, like Simon Vance yeah. or yeah, or like yeah, of course, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, and and Scott Brick and and uh, and listen to them and see how and listen to their rhythms and how they breathe. Of course, I always had this thing like because I breathe really heavy anyway. If because I try to do a whole sentence, run out of air and go <laughs> the next the beginning of the next sentence. But I find that you know if if it's in the middle of a sentence and you highlight it and you lower it about 15 dB, it actually sounds quite natural. So that's that's one little thing. Well, George, are you back? He he doesn't seem to be. George, are you there? No, he's gone. Nope. Oh, <laughs> so much for taking a break right now because he's the guy that runs the commercials. Let's move on to another topic here. Um, this is an interesting one. Um, 16 versus 24 bit. Uh, you know, we all get audio, we all send out audio. Roy, why don't we start with you on this one? What should people record at? Well,. I don't want to. I can't make a rule or a law. I, I do everything at 16. Suggest, okay. I suggest. Well, because any player can play 16, and right. You know, 24 is a good puristy. I want it to sound better, but look, you know, if it's something that's going to play out of somebody's laptop, it, you know, I read some something. Somebody wrote. Oh, 16 bit is CD quality and CDs are dead. Well, CDs <laughs> are dead, but it's CD quality. And we replaced it with something worse with MP3s. MP3s. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So 16 is fine. If a client asks for 24 and hopefully has a good reason other than, well, that's more numbers. Yeah. 24. Right. That's a yeah. bigger, that's a bigger, like 48 is theoretically better than 44 1. But each has its own. Purpose. 44.1 is CD and broadcast and radio, and 48 is digital input for video. That's just the way it is. And that's really the only reason to use 48, not because there's more numbers. I know I, I got off of the uh, bit rate into sampling frequencies, but. Um, it's the same topic. George, yeah. what do you think? Uh, I, I it was back, by the way. Google Hangouts crashed for the second time. In Sorry. The last... Welcome back. I'm back. And I when did. the Google Hangouts crashes, you guys all disappear. So I get to talk to oh, myself for a while. Wow. But we're still here. And <laughs> you guys are all having a conversation. Nobody's seeing it. Oh, really? So three in a forest. If it falls, nobody hears it. I shared the link via YouTube. Okay. So you might have two people <laughs> continuing Some to people see what's going on. people are watching it on YouTube, yeah. <laughs> well, Hi, so anyway. everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> we are on live. We what are did we on say? Um, so we, went, we shifted from breaths to bits. But um, I like the transitions here. It's cool. Uh, yeah, my, my vote is towards 16-bit, uh, unless the production that you're working on is going to, say, uh, theatrical release, and the whole production flow is 24-bit, and so what you're recording is going to be flown into a 24-bit session, blah, 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 blah. If you're going to be maintaining that resolution from beginning to end, from production to post mix everything down the line, even distribution. Yeah, absolutely. You know, keep up the let's keep up the quality there. But for everything else, it is just not necessary. You, we don't hear nor can we reproduce more than an, the the bit the, the dynamic range of of sixteen bit is ninety six uh D B or D B. The, oh. the dynamic range. Yeah, okay, the dynamic range. So, um, you, you can who has a system or any monitoring system in any home that can reproduce that kind of a dynamic range. Nobody's even close. Not only that, when you start converting back and forth, if one other piece isn't 24, or the whole project is 16, yeah. but uh, uh, is George still talking? Because I don't hear him. No, no you're no, oh, he, he he stopped. Go ahead. Like okay. literally a time um, shift. I'm on a different planet in the Google. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't watch me there. Just listen. <laughs> sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> that's the live. That's what everybody else is seeing. Um, get, you know, converting bit rates back and forth, uh, just like uh, MP3, uh, uh, you know, bits. Um, it it really starts getting generational and and weird sounding because dithering or whatever whatever. Uh, Filtering has to go on. Yeah, it's like making dubs on a VCR. We we have somebody else who's joined us who is scheduled to be with us, and he's finally here. Mike Varela, welcome to the show. Hey guys, Bye. how are you? Hey. hey Mike, nice to see you guys. Sorry, I was a little bit late here. That's okay. 
We in the process would. of being at work at the moment, so I'm taking a breather. <laughs> okay. Shh, we won't tell anyone. We just talked yes. about breathing a minute ago. Yeah, yeah I heard that. <laughs> How is everybody? We're great. How you doing? Great. Good. I hear we're on a bit depth conversation at the moment. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? Yeah. 16 or 24? Yeah, I tell everybody 16. I confuse people when we tell, try to tell everybody about different bit depths and sample rates, so I usually just tell everyone 16, 44, 1, because it's just it's easier. Right. It's yeah. Right. Yeah, um, I tell them though, if you do film, we're usually twenty four forty eight, so we stay there for that. But to kind of follow those two standards, sixteen forty four one, and a lot of the people that I work with are doing books, and that's sixteen forty four one anyway. So, excellent. Well, George, you you got our commercials racked up there. Yep. All right. Well, we're going to take a little break right now, and uh, we'll we'll regroup, get Mike back on the same page with us, and George in the same time plane. And uh, we'll be right back here on East West Audio Body Shop with our quarterly Audio Masters Roundtable. So go nowhere, because we'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, so Hangouts crash for the third time. Oh, my God. So I imagine it's going to crash every 10 minutes throughout the entire show. So, uh, well, it's just crashing on you, but you know, we're still going along here. So. Right. He says there was an unknown error. It's like a Windows error. It's just like an unknown error. And I have to join again. It's not crashing per se. It's not Chrome crashing. It's just Hangout. The cool thing is those who look like the incredible ventriloquists. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. It's, we're, it's we're looking kind of weird. And we're hearing you. It's really weird. It yeah, simple. it's really George, weird. George, did you get a TriCaster? Is that what you said? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we're not sponsored by Lex. Now, 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 George, when you click on your video feed, um, under live, does it say that you've got some sort of specialty filter on, or does it say original? No. Mine says enhanced. Uh, if you turn off enhanced, it will smooth out the amount of processing power that your original or extra oh, yeah. crispy. What do I? Oh, look at that. Did that fix How about it? that? One, two, three. Oh, can I do it too? No. Everyone still... should. Because basically, yeah, okay. it's so trying to clean up your Xbox? video in real time. Holy Where crap! Where is this one? So if you click on your own face down at the bottom so that yeah. you can see your your own video feed, right, and then you, you go under the live icon in the upper right-hand upper corner, right. you should see a box that says enhanced yep. or some other filter. Yeah, if you down. turn that down to original, it'll disable the filter and then should should smooth out your video feed because your computer is just not having to work as hard. Nice. It's still way behind, but thanks for that tip, man. I've been doing everything I can think of to take the load off my machine. And the hovering, it's still hovering at that unbelievably high CPU usage. So, yeah. so maybe you'll come back to our planet. You'll, <laughs> you're cruising along like Comet Ison. You know, I'm I'm a I'm just a village idiot, right? Because I have at least no less than five different programs that are syncing data ba- in the background. Mm-hmm. Box, Dropbox, Google Drive. I've got Crash Plan. I've got T. I got Time Machine. You All can this see crap. what it's doing to you. It's running, <laughs> it's crapping you out. Am I insane? Am I a total moron? Well, it's great that you've got all those things backed up for just in case, like something crashes. You know, so you maybe <laughs> well, want to keep as many crashing. backups running as pro- as possible. I'm running all our spots, by the way, in one row, Dan. <laughs> just, right, just do it. Yeah, we'll 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 save Harlan for the end here. Yeah. All right, all right. Let's get about. 15 seconds. Okay. All right. So we we finished with 16 versus 24 bit. Let's talk about Pro Tools and let me lead into this, and right. you guys can all make fun of me or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Running the bumper or the drop. Oh, and we have a we have a question on YouTube for Uncle Roy. Where did you win that uh, that Emmy? Where oh, he's told that Emmy story. From? They're nice guys. I'll make it brief. I'm on there. They never let me make water. So I'm gonna go make water right now. I'm a grown man. <laughs> where where did that one come from? <laughs> I I don't recall writing that one. Anyway, we're back here in East West Audio Body Shop, and it's our our quarterly Audio Masters Roundtable. We've got Cliff Zellman and Juan Carlos and Mike Varela and Uncle Roy Yokelson joining us here in our EWAB studio, which is nationwide. <laughs> And uh, somebody was asking uh, about that Emmy of yours, uh, Uncle Roy. The, 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 a brief, brief <laughs> reminder of where this fine statuette came from. Made out of chocolate. 
That's <laughs> doesn't sound like chocolate to me. It hurts. Um, 1992 Winter Olympics bobsled event. They made a little animated three-minute short. I did sound design and mixing on it. And I stopped working at the facility, and I was phoning in for my messages, and the girl said, oh, yeah, I have a message. Your Emmy is ready. And I said, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> and CBS Sports, uh, you know, paid for an Emmy and sent it over, and we won an Emmy for that little... That's great. Thing. Yeah. And it, and it always looks great on our show. It looks All like right. The logo there. Yeah. It is. Uh, item number seven, or whatever, what is it? One, two, three, this is... Okay. Something I, you know, I find, and it's because I work with so many people, that a lot of problems are caused because people are using stuff that is over their head. Uh, and when they ask an engineer, and I find that if you go into a recording studio and you're doing some voice work and you tell the engineer, oh, by the way, I have a home studio, what should I use, what microphone should I use, they're never going to give you the right answer. They're going to say, you've got to use the industry standard of Pro Tools. And you need that $10,000 uh, Geffel mic, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Pro Tools 11 has just come out. Uh, any one of you guys using that? Um, Not yet. Not yet. Uh, nobody's using it yet. We're Good, using we can... it at the lab, actually. Tell us and about it. Mostly we're using it for me to get familiar with it, but I'm not using any of the features uh, other than the 10 clip gain features, which I can't live without now. Clip gain, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Um, but the uh, bouncing, uh, I wanted to set up a track for faster than real-time bouncing, which is very exciting for post mm -hmm. and also very excited for music, but uh, we're just export option for files, so we don't really get into it very much. Um, mm. But I noticed uh, plugins are a little bit faster, um, if you're running a time, it's mostly post. It's if you're running a crazy amount of limiters and EQs and things, they stop working when they aren't needed, which is really great, and then start working again. Uh, disk cache is fantastic. It uses your entire RAM to fill up, so it's very, very fast. But, um, yeah, I'm and I'm holding off on Mavericks, which I know we're not going to get into that conversation, I don't think, today. <laughs> so uh, I'm still still doing the Mountain Lion. But, uh, yeah, it's it's nice, but it's still new, so we're waiting for another revision to come out. Yeah, it's sort of like it, it, it rides like a Prius. Mm -hmm. you know, the motor mm -hmm. turns on a little bit every now and again, and sometimes it's the mm -hmm. electric motor. Cliff, you use Pro Tools, Pro Tools at all? Yes, I've been using it since, gosh, 87 when it was Sound Designer. <laughs> um, I use it in editing, mixing, uh, bouncing exclusively. Um, I don't recommend it for voice talent. Yeah, it's, it's a... It, 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 yeah, it amazes me that anybody who's like, you know, here's that it's the industry standard. My immediate response is, what industry? Well, the, exactly. It's the industry standard for somebody who's who has experience with an analog uh, mixture that understands bus assignments, that understands sidechain compression, that understands using, um, you know, busing and routing, um, mixing multiple tracks, uh, you know. Actually, just working in an SSL on your on your laptop. So, I don't really recommend it. Industry standards, as far as the studio goes, and mixing and mixing film, absolutely, mixing albums, absolutely. But voiceover, I, I don't think so, guys. It's, it's good. The be only uh, when it's the only benefit that I ever tell people, and now that I'm teaching a little more Twisted Wave stuff, is obviously I really like Twisted Wave, and that comes from George because he had sort of showed me a little bit about it. Um, but I tell people that when they start to want to gain a little bit more time back when they're doing audiobooks, that there is a level at which Pro Tools becomes good for people. And that is when you can punch and roll, which is exciting, um, to save some more time. And also when you're interchanging sessions with editors across the country who yeah. want to see your cuts, edits, fades, trims, all that kind of stuff. But yeah. only at that level. And any self-produced material can be done on you know, Audacity, Twisted Wave, SoundForge, any of those other programs. Yeah. So it's only really when you're making sort of a living and you're starting to want to decrease the amount of time that you're working in an audiobook does it really make sense. Yeah. Um, but Pro Tools Express, which a lot of people do for voice, which is fantastic, and right now hovering around 150 bucks for an interface in the software is still a Pro Tools 10, 3, 4. That's um, what Yeah, has not gone up yet, so. Yeah, George, George, you're always fixing people's Pro Tools. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm fixing job. On, uh, asking John Connolly, who works for Avid, 
uh, to fix it for me um, because <laughs> I get so frustrated trying to stay in lockstep with whatever the latest thing is. So uh, you know that's kind of you know I've been I've been deferring more and more support on Pro Tools because I'm I'm not having a, I'm not really very successful at staying in lockstep with every new thing that's going on. You know it's like like Dan and I both, but you know many of us that do support we have to support a lot of different softwares and different platforms and it's impossible to um, be in lockstep with every single change that happens in Pro Tools. I mean that's that's a specialty to be on top of all that stuff. So I don't try to uh, to try to to be the end all be all to Pro Tools and what's new. But I mean I can make it work and I can make a workflow work great. But I was doing a little playing around with uh, Pro Tools the other day. I was going to record a jingle for the show. Yeah. And I thought I'll use Pro Tools, right? Ooh. So you know I just open it up like I would Twisted Wave. I make a new session. I create my tracks. It all lined up. I get to about the seventh track, you know, my seventh layer, <laughs> and I get DAE 720, and it just keeps Ooh. happening, over and over and over, and I'm just like, Ugh. is that your plugins? I wasn't. Is it, your, is it are you using uh, USB for an external drive? Oh, like all these guys jumping in to start trying to. I, do I was just going to say. <laughs> 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 No, I'm using an internal SSD with an internal hard drive for the media. I'm doing all of the things you're supposed to do. I have not have Wi-Fi turned off. I'm I I I have read the README, 25 page Pro Tools README. Trust me, I have troubleshooted. I don't know, God knows how many systems, right? I've done everything. And Did you yet, try rebooting, George? <laughs> what yeah. do? <laughs> Friggin' twenty, right? So I, here's what I do. I launch Adobe CC yeah. Audition. I take my WAV files from Pro Tools, drop them in Audition, and I finish my job. And you get the job done, mm -hmm. yeah. Can we, done. can we hear the end result? Okay, here's the end result. I, for some reason, it got buried. I'm trying to unbury it right now while I talk. So it's, it's in my computer somewhere. It's uh, like, you know, if anyone owned a Ferrari, which I don't think any of us do here, they would say the same yeah. thing. The upkeep on those is just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So uh, constant I, learning and yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. let me uh, go to the right output here. See if I can do this without blowing up the show. EWABS. Nice. Oh, I didn't know you could sing, George. <laughs> nice. A little pitch correction and yeah, you're. Yeah. you're I didn't good. do it. There's no pitch shifting. There's no auto. There's no auto tune in there. That's the real deal. Um, standing. Nice. Hams Thanks. of Dallas is is uh, waiting for you to call you. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey George, uh, real quick, we're on that subject because I'm always looking for. It would be great if Liquid Wave was so that there could be a single platform for a reduced price. Scratching the mic to see if it works. Is anybody scratching the mic? Not me. Mm, no Somebody right. was scratching their mic, like trying to see if it was working. Nope. Okay. Maybe that's Joe Charles. Charles. Was. Please go ahead, uh, Mike. Oh, I was just, so I, I wish that Twisted Wave was for PC as well because it would be great to have a cheaper option for both platforms that you could stick everyone on and just sort of support one yeah. software. Um, yeah. And I know that Audition used to be in the 300 range, but now with the rental policy, what is what are people paying for that now through the uh, Creative Cloud? We're from 20 to $50 a month. Something like that, yeah. I, 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 I just downloaded it. CS6. Yeah, I, I still use CS6. And I really, I really like CS6. I, I've downloaded the the trial version of, of uh, CC, and it, boy, it boots like that. I mean, you know, it's that's been the great thing about all these programs is they've, you know, from Sound Booth and Audition, and now up to CS6 and now CC. It's the engine on it is a lot faster, and it boots up very, you know, once you click that program, it comes up. It's not like, well, I'm going to get a cup of coffee while this thing is decides that it's going to start working. Uh, yeah. It's got a couple of cool little neat little features, uh, some enhancements, higher resolution on the spectrogram, which I really like. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm debating, you know, whether to go for the full bore thing and and get Premiere and 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 After Effects and all that stuff that I never use, uh, or just get CS or just get CC. Yeah, I'm splitting it with my wife because she's a Photoshop person. So you know. Or we we and you can load the licenses on two machines in the same household without without Adobe dropping the hammer on you. So we're that's what we do. We cheat. 
Mm. Yeah. All right. Or some of the other th topics here. Well, if if you've got a question in the chat room, if there's something that's like totally bugging you and you've always wanted to talk to the masters about it, and why you got a, why you got us on the line. Uh, we got people and, uh, monitoring the chat room there. So and while we're waiting for chat to come in, yeah. because I just yes. wanted to, I just wanted to throw in because this this sort of dogmatic industry standard thing pops up because you also mentioned microphones and that always becomes the one thing that I end up having to troubleshoot in hardware more often than anything else, is watching people go from like a seventy or eighty dollar USB mic and then dropping a grand on like a TLM one hundred three mm. and oh, but I don't understand why my recordings don't sound better. And in fact, they often sound worse. Worse. Um, what kind of uh, what kind of message and and <laughs> what kind of help we might be able to disseminate for people who are shopping? Because I keep getting that where it's like, oh, I want to spend like four hundred dollars on a nice mic. I can't help you <laughs> over Twitter. I, I'm not going to recommend something. <laughs> In 140 yeah. characters or, or less, when I've never had my ears in your home to know what it might sound like. Yeah, I mean, if if you go you go into the catalogs and stuff, if you you know you open up your mail and the the banjo emporium catalog comes, I mean, it's just one microphone after another. What's the difference? I mean, George and I were at the MXL plant over the summer, and uh, God, they make so many different microphones. I still don't know. If it's for oh. aesthetic value or what, it's just <laughs> like little differences and stuff. Yeah, they, they need to trim that line down. That's too crazy. Yeah, I like the yeah. red one on that place or not. <laughs> the red one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we did it. We did a thing last week about about mics, and you know, does it really make a difference? You know, it it, it makes a difference is that they sound different, but does somebody definitely sound better on one versus another? It always comes down to. How well can you read, or how well yeah. do you interpret copy? Because if you're sl sounds slightly different on one mic than another, but you're still totally intelligible, and it still sounds like you, who cares? I always tell people if they have a hundred bucks to spend ninety of it on getting the room right first, and then figure out the other ten bucks. Because yeah. even a USB mic, like you were saying, one that's fifty or sixty bucks is going to sound fine in a decent room. Yep. Um, right. And then we're talking about colors of preamps and all that stuff, which is really high end conversation, but. Your room's going to cause it all, you know? But I'm glad you said that, too, because I've had the opposite problem with people trying to convince others that you don't need to buy, a, like, a practical recording solution. You can just get the Apogee. Listen to this sound test where someone compared the Apogee to the U87, and, man, it sounds almost as good. And then you look at the video, and it's someone in a multi-million dollar studio. And a coat chamber. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, man, this thing's, this thing's like just as good as this $3,000 mic. And, yeah, yeah. And, and at least just in continuing on side of the discussion where I've been trying to have that nuance, to inject that nuance where just because a U87 is a $3,000 mic and a Manly tube reference mic is going to be a $10,000 mic, it doesn't mean that the Manly is three times better yeah than the U87. It's just that's the specific tool and Manly can price it at that for the market. And and yeah. likewise moving backwards, like a U87 isn't going to be three times better than an AKG C414. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's it's that once you get to that point where you're you're really getting that picky about what flavors of audio that you're trying to accomplish, um, that certain mics will bring out those colors and certain mics will work against that. So you want to make sure you're picking the right tool for the right job. And right. by the time that I finished that statement, I've already watched their eyes glaze over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah. You know, if you're metal. if you're in New York and you can get to B and H, that have that has a terrible room, but it has a lot of mic set up and uh, a lot of mic preamps. And if you go with somebody whose ears you could trust, you know, like if you George or Dan or me or any of that would. Cliff, any of these guys uh, could go with you and listen and be your ears because you can't tell reading live. Right. What does it sound like in your headphones? Is it good or bad? And uh, that's some of the. Well, we and, do and I don't and I don't mean to be discouraging, but the second you get it out of that room and you put it into your bedroom, mm -hmm. it's going to be sound a different. completely yeah. different uh, sound than what you were able to glean. Yeah, we do a shootout every three months at the lab where we do about six mics, and I try to keep them. Like other than the 416, which is our control, uh, we usually try to keep things under about 500 bucks, so people can kind of find mics that are in that range, and almost nobody can tell the difference between them, other than right. gross bass enhancements or you know extra <laughs> treble in one mic here or there. 
most of them are like, can you tell me? Can you help me out? And I was like, see, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Right. You read one person on a ribbon a half inch yeah. from the element and then another person across the room on a shotgun. And, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. obviously the ribbon was way richer, so that's yeah, probably yeah. the best. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, it's warm. All these warm mics. Is that going to make me sound warm? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or just, tube. Just Gotta yeah. have the tube. Oh, yeah. tubes, because you need tubes for warmth. Always, Apparently, always. that's what we want is warm. Well, they do recordings. keep you warm. They they heat up and they keep you nice and warm. Right? <laughs> that's, that's why just, we always have the control whole... room very cold. because Anyone who's playing. owned an SSL understands that. You know? <laughs> yeah, we used to claim, well, you know, all, the, all the equipment needs to be cool. There's tubes in there. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, and, and, and of course, and, and as we were saying, I always believe that if you're going to buy a mic, you can only test it in the room you're going to work it, you use okay. it in, uh, right. because otherwise, it's kind of a kind of a useless sort of thing. How you sound in headphones isn't real anyway. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's move on to, to sort of the next topic. That, and and as, and Mike brought that up is as you say, and I usually recommend, and I know George recommends, and I'm sure we all do. I always believe that about ninety percent of the quality of your audio is going to be dependent on the acoustics of your room. Now, Clifford, where, where did Cliff go? Is he still he here? Home. No, he'll be back. Okay, when he gets back, we can talk about it. But there was this device that came up that's, you know, it's a, a $200, $240 Nerf ball. $200, yeah, plus $200 <laughs> Nerf ball. Uh, this, this uh, whatever eye this ball. thing is. The eye, the, the eye hole? Yeah. Eye I, ball. Eye ball, eye ball. Why are you trying to make it sound dirty? I, I try to do that with everything. <laughs> The eyeball. Uh, I, now, I'd be the, disappointed with you if you if they knew you were calling it a Nerf ball. I I know. For, they're not sponsoring our show okay. yet. Yes. Um, <laughs> and once they do, it's the most yeah. amazing product. It, it's going to be had. fabulous. Yeah. You know, now Cliff Cliff was doing some some uh, some tests with this during the week, and now there's a lot of products out there that are designed to create a dead room, or at least I think they all have different uses. Like you, you've got the SE Reflexion filter, which really isn't bad. Uh, you've got, uh, you've also got um, Studio you, Suit. Studio Suit. Hey. Which I, I have all sorts of stories I could tell about that this week. I've been selling that stuff all over the place, and people are loving it. But there's a reason why Studio Suit is different from the Eyeball, and then you know the SE Reflexion filter, and then the things are they're mud calling out the mud flaps, the portables. <laughs> the porta booths, uh, they, uh, clear sonic panels. Right, none of these things are are soundproofing things, and a lot of people no. buy these things thinking, well, well, how come I'm still hearing the highway? Right. <laughs> you know, what are your guys' thoughts about some of these some of these devices? Uh, I, the porta booths, I've heard a lot of really good stuff. If you're in a decent room, and if you can't get into a closet at some place, and you have to do a bedroom that's a good twelve by twelve. I've heard some pretty good results as long as you're not facing a window and you're not on a street of traffic, um, which is a lot of caveats. And that's why I was excited about this eyeball thing, and that's why I was asking about it, you know, for maybe later in the show to see how good it is. Because I tell people quickly, because I don't have a lot of time to spend with them, that if they need to sonically cut the room down, it's a physical thing, and they often can't afford three or four hundred dollars in panels around the entire room. Nor will the wives let them do that kind of thing to the walls. So. Um, so that tends to be the easiest solution to discuss at least quickly, and it's helped a lot of people. But yeah, it's not soundproofing ever. Yeah, but, I, but I just I'm kind of happy Mike went there because it for me a lot of these sort of room shaping tools that we've got really are most effective in rooms that are already sort of well cordoned mm. off, that are already kind of quiet, don't have a lot of live activity in them already, and mm. I just haven't found the benefit, like I've got a um, the SE mic thing in my closet right now that I like to bring out occasionally just to show people what it can do, but I still haven't found the return on investment for that guy over like what I've got in on the wall behind me right now where I've just put up blankets on the wall with those little 3M adhesive hooks and it looks janky as crap, <laughs> but that's actually doing more in my room than when I trot out my $300 uh, 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 filter. Yeah, I mean, I, what is it? It's the SM Pro Audio version of that, the one yeah, with the adjustable gotcha. sides. Right, yeah. right. It's the same thing. Um, and it, what what it, what it can do is it can it can make my recording sound really boxy when I'm in this room, and that's that's about it. Um, mm -hmm. It's not really helping shape or partition any better than what I've got up on the wall for cheap right now. 
Yep. Now, 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 I'm, now, I've got studio suit. Now, I can tell you about studio suit. I have a very bad shoulder this week because of studio suit. Because I was personally in the warehouse this week cutting this stuff up into 5 by 8 sheets and sending it off to the four corners of the globe, and people are, are raving about it. But I can't manufacture this stuff myself anymore. It's mm-hmm. I'm getting too old for it. I stood up. My knee was locked. I threw out my rotator cuff. I can't do it myself. So I think what we're going to ha- do is there are people who are, there are organizations, uh, not-for-profit organizations. They're called that, elves. That, no, well, they're, let's not <laughs> go there quite yet. Th- who hire the handicapped and the disabled who learn uh, manufacturing skills, and they'll be able to manufacture this stuff for me in much larger quantities, and then I can compete with Oralex. Although <laughs> it's like that's going to happen, um, but they sell it, their products at Home Depot, so good luck. Yeah, I know. I well, I got a Home Depot around the corner. Hey, you guys, want to <laughs> try this stuff here? Pull out of the back of your trunk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, but to but to go along with what I think the the what what most people are sort of asking when they ask people like us what it is that they should do to properly treat their home studios or something like that. Have you guys found any solutions for? Better and not 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 you know sound reflection but sound absorption, you know have what 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 do you recommend for someone who's like I'm in a condo and I don't want to have to tear open my walls and install really really expensive insulation and I can't build a floating floor and do all that other kind of work. What what do we tell someone when that's their? their I'm gonna tell you my my dirty solution that really really worked last time was to build a PVC igloo with double thick moving blankets held over the top with wood panels and create a space in a space of like five by five or four by four with like a five inch yeah it's ugly and you gotta record without a shirt because it's super hot and you can only be in there for like an hour and a half but it did a really good job and you just keep adding blankets on top of it to keep cooling it down or to keep the sound out and it's worked really really well for a couple people but you're you know building PVC rooms and you know it's not pretty and Dan did that with Studio Suit. We've done that with Studio yeah. Suit. We built a, a five by a five by four by seven foot cube, mm-hmm. and threw Studio Suit on it. We experimented with it when we were at uh, Angan Goose's house back in July, and fabulous results. And I've been yeah, having great, great results, having great results with people in basements and people who are like, well, I have to go take care of my parents for two months, and I need to record, and I need somewhat of a temporary setup. And it's worked really, really well. Bottom I mean, it, is, the only thing that keeps out noise is dense, dense absolutely density. Yes. Density. It's got to be heavy and dense. So if you're dealing with a condo, you can't do damage to the place, or even if you're if you're renting, whatever the case is, um, there are ways. The first place, the first thing to do is where the hell's the noise coming from? Is it coming from the windows? Okay, if let's say it's coming from the windows, then you plug those windows. And the cheapest possible way to do that is with layers of drywall. And it ain't pretty, but it's just drywall. It can be removed. It's not going to hurt anything. It's, it's, you know, it's drywall. It's chalk. The worst thing it's going to do is make a, a white, big, messy, you know, a big mess out of white powder. You know, it's not going to hurt anything. That is, that, you know, and maybe layer the back of it with, stuff it with foam or studio blankets or whatever will keep some noise out of the window. That is the cheapest thing you can do to keep a lot of noise out because it's most likely... Nine times out of ten, a noise coming from the window. Uh, if it's not the window, or if it is the window and you fix that, then it's that old. It's the old analogy of plugging a dam. You know, you start with the big <laughs> hole first. So you plug the big hole, then you figure out where the next hole is, and you work from you work your way around. Put a remote control power strip on the refrigerator. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of cool remote control power strips these days. Some of them will control up to four different devices. So you can label them all and say fish tank, refrigerator, uh, let's <laughs> <laughs> bubble, my kid's bubble that where he sees, he sleeps. Put that, you know. No. <laughs> 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 you can turn them all on, on and off, at, you know, as necessary, and just remember to turn them back on. Yep. Yeah. Especially the furnace or the air I conditioning. Usually tell, I usually tell people two places that I love to go, and one is ATS Acoustics which does really, really nice panels pre-built and also custom stuff that you can buy and build yourself. And then uh, I like a, a website called Movers Supplies, which does moving blankets, but they're double thick, and they'll grommet them for you for a buck a grommet. And, um, oh, that's and I usually great. Tell, yeah, I usually tell people you can sew them. They're 6 by 6 I think. 
so you can fold one and sew it down to hit the eight-foot floor, you know, in, a, in an apartment and hang it from the ceiling, kind of like Juan has done, and uh, create a box in a box for yourself. And, well, that's not going to treat every truck driving by. It does a lot for reflections, and they're generally pretty cheap, 20 bucks that's a blanket or something. That will encroach our low-frequency noise. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. rumble. And rumble is not a cost-effective thing to fix in a home studio yeah. unless yeah. you're David K, where I just came from is house where he has a guest house and he's spending $120,000. Uh, that is, you know, David... Oh, is K that all? Is that all it takes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, he's doing more than just a studio. There's more to it. It's But but still, don't even try to go there, you know, in, in a home studio. If you rent an apartment in the takeoff landing uh, zone of LAX or Burbank Airport, <laughs> move! Mm -hmm. is your, how important is your career? You know, absolutely. Yeah, that yeah. always that always shocks me. I used to, you know, it's always a question of you live where you choose to live, and if your, you know, if it's your profession is dependent upon that exterior noise, might be best to move to Wisconsin. I, I had a client who bought a whisper room to sleep in, <laughs> and it still wasn't quiet enough. Well, it wasn't a client. It was a guy who wanted me to know. He wanted to know what to do, and I said, "I'm sorry, buddy." I can't help you, man. Move. You know, and if you're not willing to move, I, I can't help you. If you yeah. can't sleep inside a whisper room in your apartment, you got other yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised yeah. there hasn't been like a uh, a group of VO artists who've gotten together and sort of done a, a Google calendar and rented a small office space somewhere and they just say, Look, I'm gonna book it out for two hours today, you got it for four hours on Saturday, I got it for seven hours on Thursday and Everybody yeah. pays rent like a band does, you know, where they like they take out a room right. together. And yeah, I, I think in in the modern voice industry today, I mean, and and as a working voice actor, it things are very very sudden. I mean, most of the stuff mm -hmm. that we do is coming in. I mean, you've got projects that are you know that that are ongoing, but a lot of stuff is very spur of the moment. Oh, here's your script for today, or here's this. Mm -hmm. You really don't know the time, and it's kind of tough to like schedule that time out, yeah, which is yeah. the importance of having a home studio. Yeah. And that actually is the the advantage of doing that. <laughs> well, and, and and especially here in LA, we're sort of working against face to face relationships. So who would yeah. you meet? How would you meet them to arrange that kind of business yeah, yeah. Uh, endeavor? And then uh, for the few shared workspaces that I've seen that have had audio components, I always end up being the guy that they call after about a month when everything. <laughs> broken. Yeah, whose yeah. great idea was that? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Once everything's been torn apart and they can't figure out how to make it work again, then yeah. they call me back in to put it all back together. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting question, because I know this is coming, it's the middle of the afternoon in Australia, and Carol Spencer Morgan <laughs> has, has decided that she's become an Iwabian in the afternoon, on Tuesday afternoon, and she has an interesting question, and I know, you know, Juan, Carlos, this is probably a good one for you. And, and all right, Mike. let's do this. Okay, okay. Good. She, says, she says, living overseas, dreaming big and aiming high, in your opinion, can that work, or is it best to re re relocate to, her vo to VoiceOver Central in the U.S.? Cheers from down under, she says. What do you think? Uh, she cheers. Um, Good day. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> well, so so first off, if, have you exhausted all of the opportunities that you can really, you know, maximize to build a career where you are now? You know, I mean, we have the same sort of uh, debate here in the United States, locally. I mean, not even locally. It's the United States. It's pretty big. Um, but, you know, like, should I leave my small town and then move to a larger market? And you, you'll start asking people questions about that, and then they still haven't really done anything in their local markets. And you're then going to sort of relocate. I kind of feel that's that's putting the cart before the horse. Um, really take a look at what opportunities you have there. What kind of career can you build there? Um, even maybe moving locally in Australia or New Zealand or any of these other areas where there might be more opportunities. And then from there, using that as a springboard, using that as a launch pad rather than just trying to make one huge leap uh, could be a really good way to build over time, in my opinion. I would yeah, agree. agree. Yeah, it's, uh, there's more people here. I mean, there's 10 million people in Los Angeles, you know. It's, so more jobs, more people, and it's expensive. Not to, you shouldn't come over here, but uh, <laughs> what are the legal ramifications, too? You have to, you know, file for visas and come over, like, you know, apply for citizenship, figure that out. Um, and is there going to be work here for you? It's, you know, you could do audiobooks from anywhere in the world. Um, you don't have to be restricted to, you know, a certain place. And I don't know about the, the legal... Uh, justifications for working in the U.S. and having agents here. I don't have to be a U.S. citizen. 
to do that, but that's something you might be able to look into as well to see if you can have agents in different states here and work uh, from overseas via you know FTP and, and email and stuff. So. Yeah, I, 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 it's a worldwide market now. I mean, you can basically yeah. do this from anywhere, and it's how well you market yourself. And as is, you know, you're saying that uh, the, the, it's not, it, it's we're becoming not so much of a face-to-face -face business, and right. it's all going to become home-based. So it really doesn't matter where you are. I could do this from Nome. Why would I want to? I'm not quite sure. Well, and, and uh, I, I think in, cer in certain, like, for example, in L.A. right now, what's really hot is, for face-to-face, -face is, is stuff like mocap. You know what I mean? It's it's we're finding new avenues where people actually do have to meet in one big building and encounter each other and collaborate. So certain aspects like audiobooks have now become very 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 uh, voice actor driven, but other avenues are starting to push into to face to face um, uh, encounters. But along with that. You know, if you're if you're down in Australia and you're thinking, well, you know, hey, as a part of my voiceover career, I also want to try and get into mocap. You know, I off the top of my head, you know, there's this thing in New Zealand that they're shooting called, you know, the Lord of the Rings, and you know, they do exactly. a lot of stuff down there. You know, like really close to you, there is a community of people that are already doing a ton of work, and mm -hmm. you know, have have you even investigated that as an opportunity rather than just saying, hey, I want to go to Los Angeles. You know, everyone comes here to do this thing that we talk about and I don't always feel that the amount of homework like especially the stuff that Mike was bringing up all of those business concerns keeping your house in order keeping your your legal crap in order um, if, if you don't have that all nailed down then you're not going to be competitive out here you know it's not right. just whether or not you can compete as a performer it's whether or not you can actually get here and sustain I have a friend and student who is the busiest voiceover guy in Brazil so all of his stuff is is, uh, is uh, Portuguese, he, but he fooled me. He showed up at one at one of my classes, and I couldn't figure out where he came from. So his English is really really good. So now now he moved to L.A., and he's very very busy. But all of his business <laughs> is still his Brazilian clients. He's trying to get an uh, you know an L.A. agent. So the point is. You know, uh, it doesn't matter wherever the, your your uh, workload is coming from. It's still really hard to get new work in California, where it's so uh, densely populated with voiceover people. Yep. Mm -hmm. Was it when we had um, uh, Maurice Tobias on? She was saying she read somewhere that there are 1.3 million people looking for voice work every day. Crazy. Uh, on the entire planet. Oh, the entire planet. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's not so bad then. It's got, well, it's, yeah. It's got to be more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it Kyle, seems like it some days. <laughs> it's like if I go, pop over to my Twitter feed, uh, I'm sure it's that many people right there just looking for voice. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, Carol says, George, please mention the citizenship. It is not a problem. Oh, she's an American citizen. She uh, happens to be living in in in, in Oz. Oh, I talk to a lot oh. of people who are working in their markets, and they're doing pretty well, like smaller markets, even like San Francisco or Chicago or smaller Miami. Smaller markets. <laughs> then Los Angeles. And okay. doing really well, and they move down here because they think they need to be down here mostly for acting and realize that they get down here and there's, like, no work. It's really competitive and difficult. And they, they had contacts. They knew people. They were doing a good job where they were. And just wanted to grow, and it and it gets increasingly difficult when you come into a big city, you know. Some agents just want you very local that you could come in and yeah, out, you know. Yeah, very true. Fish small pond thing, small pond or small fish big pond. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, Lila well, and really just examining out. what what kind of opportunities it is that you're tr you're hoping to bank on. I mean, we talk about voiceover as if it's this one industry, and yet every single niche of no of voiceover is its own particular genre and flavor. And if you're not really honest with yourself about what it is that you're trying to accomplish, you, you want to do everything, you're going to get out to a place like L.A., and you're going to spin your wheels for a really long time. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. Well, I think we're, we're pretty much running out of stuff to talk about here. It can, go on. Never. It can, can I ask you guys one thing? I wanted sure. to ask. I know we, the eyeball or eye, whatever that thing was. Uh, I don't know if you guys discussed that before I got on, and forgive me if you guys did, but has oh, yeah, anyone... we kind of sidetracked out of that. <laughs> yeah, we did. Has <laughs> anyone tried that? Because I really kind of want to know if it sounds halfway decent. Uh, well, I know Clifford had been experimenting with it, and he, and he, he actually sent us some charts, but he's gone now. But right, we'll... but I, I, I set up, uh, you know, someone's doing audiobooks in her bathroom, Studio B, 
and <laughs> I started. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. You can segue we'll to a Harlan uh, a Harlan spot if you want, but we I, are. We're going to right. So I started with a Porta Booth Plus. And then added the eyeball uh, into that, and then surrounded the eyeball with towels because you need density. <laughs> and um, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, it's uh, beyond passable for audiobook quality. Wow! Well, that's good. not saying much for audiobooks then. Well, uh, it's it's somewhere in between, you know. Yeah. You wouldn't want to do a documentary in there, but uh, but, but I also just kind of feel like you know, because I'm really big on vibe. You know, and like that takes that. That's a very interesting room to carve up for yeah, a workspace. Yeah, yeah really, you know not I mean? a good room like, to do that. Yeah. Well, it, it's a slightly older couple. There's no children, you know, um, and she's doing what she has to do, or uh, well, on multiple levels, I guess. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> the one thing that that promises, at least visually, is is it's so odd to speak into a porta booth, and it would be much easier to speak and read past a ball. Uh, with an iPad right. or something that you have, which which I hope it sounds good. I don't know, it's a lot of money to try it out. So all the tests I heard with the ball, the guy was singing or talking yeah. right at the mic. So you had a lot, a really pronounced proximity effect. So mm -hmm. I had a bad impression of what it really should sound like. So I'm curious. a bad test. Sounds like with proper mic voiceover, mic placement, or mic technique, mm -hmm. and see how it uh, how it works out. Well, I think right. we should get the folks who make the eyeball to come on our show and okay. give us a true demonstration. They're Canadian, you know. A? Oh, well, a. in that case. C-A-N-D-A... C-A-N-D-A? C-A-O-T-I-C-A. Well, whatever. <laughs> Five miles from here, I'm and I can't spell my neighbor's name here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me ask the, the two questions from the chat room we didn't address. Jay Sawyer said, is a rubber floor a good idea for home studios? Couldn't hurt you. No. It doesn't okay. hide, yeah. Her, Carp carpeting works fine, yeah. too. I, I, I go shag, man. That's what I'm <laughs> shagging in here. I got it's carpet gross mine. and it looks dirty. Um, and then the other one, uh, somebody mentioned Reaper as another alternative for punch and roll recording. Mm -hmm. And um, it works really well. Yeah, it's another yeah. flavor of a Pro Tools-like program, so it has its own <laughs> learning curve, but it's a super lightweight program. I mean, the download is like 10 megabytes yeah. And uh, wow. it still has full-blown multi-track with effects wow. processing, and you can run inserts, and you can throw Source Connect in there, and it does pretty much everything. I think it's pretty. Yeah, cool. Linda, Linda.com just actually finished a video series on it. Um, if they're interested, yeah, on sure. Reaper. Yeah. So yeah. it's another good one to to check out, and I and I actually mentioned it in a webinar I did on audiobook production using Reaper. I demonstrated it, so. Um, yeah, yeah, man. Gosh, anybody else? Should we go around the horn and see if there's any one last wrap-up topic? Everybody yeah. that we didn't bring up yet, or yeah, Roy. Um, I didn't get to put in my two cents on Pro Tools. Not, not, oh. big, not a big please, deal, but please do. No, uh, most of you guys said it. Um, it's great for the. I call it roll and punch because that's what you do, but. <laughs> the studio terminology really? wants to call it punch and roll. Okay. Accurate. Accurate, you. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Um, <laughs> and that's really the only reason a voiceover person should be using Pro Tools unless they're doing full-blown production. And as most people know, I'm a big Adobe Audition guy. And, you know, there really isn't... If I do a session in the city, the only reason I do it on Pro Tools is because I can take that session home and then... Uh, you know, import the WAV files into Adobe Audition, and I finish in there. So, Roy, does they, and I don't know because I don't use Audition. Do they have RMS normalization in Audition? I'm thinking they do, but of course, I'm not, yeah. yeah. Okay, I yeah, just want in there. Haven't used it for a long time, so yeah. It's yeah. the the new program is. I mean, the new Audition when they sort of merged it with Soundbooth, it really yeah. is nice, especially with the Spectrograph, which a lot of people are finally getting the understanding of because mm -hmm. that's a great way to get rid of. And it has auto heal. Takes. And it has that. Oh, heal. those new auto heal features are sweet. They yeah. really are. They really are. You got a but mouth bet, noise. Just, but just to just to piggyback on what you were saying, Uncle Roy. Yeah. The, uh, as a commercials guy, I you know we don't need anything more than Audacity. Yeah. We really don't because most of what it is that we're going to be doing is is so dry voice, short form. You know, you you just gotta. 
it, it, it's silly to start spending a ton of money on on this stuff beyond that. If most of what you're going to be doing is auditioning from home or, or, or auditioning, unless you do a ton of editing, because the you know just zooming in and out on Audacity will drive you mad. As compa as con yeah. compared to having a scrolly wheel, and that's, that's that's yeah. why that's why I also like especially when I'm coaching and working with actors that maybe yeah. they should just get good at reading so that they don't need to do a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, it's so easy. I'll Peter, tell you. Peter, <laughs> Th Peter Thomas yeah. said to me, "You know why I don't make mistakes? Because back in the day, we used to record to disc, and there was no oh. editing. And oh, if you made oh, a mistake, wow. the engineer would be mad at you. And I didn't want yeah. anybody mad at me, so I don't make mistakes." So you read very slowly and <laughs> very, very. Lots well, of hey, man, like even my first internship, I, they had me cutting tape, man. So any anything that I can do to to take some of the burden off of post, I just try and plan ahead. Yeah. Mike? Ah, uh, you guys. I'm pretty good, actually. I wanted to ask George really quickly um, about, I know your headset, I was going to ask that quickly, about audiobook <laughs> production with headsets, and if that's even an option, because I love the uh, free motion of the head without having to be tied to a microphone. Do you think anybody's talked to you about that before, or asked, or have you talked to anybody about using, like, a countryman or something for that? Well, I'm using one right now. I just switched to the headset mic. Let me turn up the gain a little bit. It's a little bit too low. Doing it Braille style, by feel. One, two, three, four. There we go. So this is my headset mic. This is a $15 Pyle microphone, P-Y-L-E, from Amazon.com. It's plugged into a $50 power adapter guy that allows it to plug into a mixer. So this takes it from its little, uh, what, is they, what do they call it, TAF4, whatever, yeah. XLR plug to XLR on the other you can plug into a regular mixer. So I have a $60 or so headset mic, right? That you cannot get cheaper. It's not possible. Would this be Sounds considered pretty good. audiobook quality? Probably. I mean, the noise floor, where you really pay the big bucks is clearly the uh, frequency response and the noise floor on a good headset. Okay, so this one's got a decent sound. It's a little bit narrow band. The top end, there's not much of it there above, say, 10K. Um, but would it, would it work for an audiobook? I'm pretty sure that the folks at ACX would be just happy, just fine with, uh, you know, what you could get out of this microphone. So you yeah. can't beat the ability to, to do this and to get your book and sit back in your chair and uh, let's see, read about uh, Lazarus and uh, you know have a relaxed read and you know put your take your headset off for a minute and go get a coffee and, and never be off mic. Put it back there. on again. The mic's in right. the same spot. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and I was always kind of worried, like especially from the onset work that I've done, if if maybe you could also get away with like a lav, mm. you know, yeah. to to try and clip out a lav. As opposed to, to going to something like right on right on your mouth with the headset yeah. mic. Yeah. You know? The reason I, I, like I don't do audiobooks, so I don't know what what like yeah. when you guys talk about audiobook quality, what that means. The, the I, said, I wonder if that's inherently sort of cardioid because labs are all omnidirectional most of Usually. the time. This is omni. This yeah. Is omni. It the is reason omni. Why okay. It works so well is because it's two inches from my mouth. Right. Yeah. And if if you're as long as you're. Hi, Cliff. Set up, so, hey, Cliff's back. Good. Welcome uh, back. Cliff, whenever you jump back into a hangout, Cliff, you come back in muted, so you're, you probably need to unmute yourself. Okay, how about now? Can you hear yeah. 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 Boy, what, I almost had a heart attack. Good Lord. That's okay. okay. <laughs> well, I had to. I had to pull out my hard drive. I had to. I had to format a new hard drive. I had to reinstall my operating system. <laughs> what? I had to. I had to sign up with a new internet service, and I had to move to Arizona. So all in ten minutes. Wow. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Baby. Well done. Well There's done. Business work out here for you. <laughs> all right. Carry on, gentlemen. I'll pick up the pieces. They had a question sure. for you about your eyeball test. What about my How's your eyeball? eyesight? Yes, since you're back now. <laughs> Okay, well, um, the eyeball. The eyeball is a tool. It's it's not a be all end all fix. It uh, I have noticed that it greatly reduces room uh, reverb, uh, bouncing off of hard walls. If you're just starting up and you, you know, want to go into a fourth bedroom, it kind of helps out a little bit. It's absolutely not uh, a cure for a perfect sounding room. Um, I think that if you do use it, one of the benefits would be if you go on the road and you use it on the road, you can keep your uh, audio pretty close. Um, if you do use it four hours a month, it might be worth it. Um, you feel it's like it's worth of, the cash? I don't know, man. It's a lot of money. It's it's two hundred yeah. bucks. Um, you know, if you if you want one, and if you want one for. 
25% off, send me an email, I'll give you a product code. I know a lot of people are giving out discounts right now. I actually like mine. I, I think it's really cool, but I'm surrounded by little gimmicks and toys. And is it a gimmick and a toy? You know what? It depends on how you use it. If you massage it, if you work with it, um, you'll get some good results. If you are buying it to say, this is going to fix my problem, okay. I, th I think you got to call Dan or George or me or Roy or anybody on this panel here to, to get you to the next level. I don't think that the eyeball is going to get you to the next level. And I have gotten a lot of emails about what's mm -hmm. the, you know what's up with the eyeball versus a studio suit. And I said, you know what? A studio suit comes with a consultation. It comes with a guy. It comes with a plan. It comes with an investment. It comes with building mm -hmm. something that you can use for the next 15 years. An eyeball, it's a toy. It's fun. It looks cool. I know, you know, Juan was saying a little earlier, who cares what it looks like? But you know what? It is cool. <laughs> and if you and if you can pick one up, you know what, guys? And I hope that, you know, no one's watching this other than us five. But in a year from now, man, I don't know what you can get one on eBay for 10 bucks. You know? I'm willing to bet that is probably... <laughs> yeah. Probably yeah. the case. I do yeah. wish Chaotica all of that. Oh, I, do, I love Even, them. Love them. Yes, like show up at AES costs tens of thousands of dollars. You know, they obviously made the investment. You know, it's it's a yeah. big deal. Um, yeah. But you know what? You know, it's, I wish in the wish every time I see a new innovative product, it's so hard to avoid the inevitability uh -huh. of being knocked off. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's unfortunately what always seems to happen. But I do wish them the best. It's innovative. If you have absolutely no sound treatment in your room at all and you're starting absolutely from scratch, chances are this will not be the solution per se. Will it make a difference? <laughs> yes. But would $200 buy you a lot of moving blankets or one, two... Uh, a piece of studio suit wrapped around your 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 little zone, or you know, yes. And it, would it make a much bigger difference? Absolutely. I mean, as Juan demonstrated, throwing a moving blankets around the room, you can buy a hell of a lot of moving blankets for two hundred dollars. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That would be infinitely more useful than a, yeah. a yeah. And and the eyeball, you know, brings in a, it brings in a lot of issues that the studio suit doesn't. You know. Um, so, I mean, I think it's really neat. I, I think only, the company is great. I've talked to the owner. Really nice guy. Yeah, only certain, micro, only certain microphones, only certain side address microphones will fit in there, like an 87, a 103, mm -hmm. uh, certain MXL mics. But a yeah. shotgun mic uh, just yeah. doesn't... Like this. It, it's not made for that. Yeah. Yeah, no. or, or something like the porta booth, which was actually designed for a 416. Right. A lot of a lot right. of people forget that that you use a shotgun mic in a porta booth. That's the way Harlan designed it. See the neat segue, George? Um, because <laughs> it's time to plug. Mood. It's not just a plug. He is our sponsor, yes. Harlan Hogan, at Voiceover Essentials, uh, the home of the VO1A, the voiceover microphone. And of course, the Porta Booth and the Porta oh Booth Pro, and all of the great accessories that that Harlan has over there, and the uh, headphones, and of course I'm the Harlan Hogan Signature Series headphones, which Uncle Roy obviously likes, and I like mine, and <laughs> they're 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 great headphones. He's got all this stuff over at VoiceOverEssentials.com. Go on over there, tell them we sent you, because yeah. he likes to know that we send people over there. Uh, but he's got it, it's great for great. He's got great deals for gifts this time of year. Uh, he's got lots of cool little contraptions. Plus, he has access to all the other stuff that you can get online through various other means. And, and we, we, go we, ahead. So we didn't mention that special deal. Oh yes, deal that Harlan brought up to us that we said we weren't going to forget and bring oh, it up. There were deal. There's still plenty of people watching. Let's tell them about it. Yeah, what well, was it? Harlan wanted to offer a coupon code or some kind of a deal for our viewers. Right. The I closed my window that had that. Did I? Did I <laughs> information? Someone vamp. Someone do something funny. Uh, <laughs> distraction. Into the chat room. So I'm looking at the information. Whoa. <laughs> And now we've been attacked by Daleks. Awesome. Oh. Oh. Quick, quick, somebody play some Slim Whitman. I where's, actually, your, where's your banjo, man? I gotta, I gotta take this opportunity. I gotta bail and leave you guys. I gotta go back to work. So it was a pleasure being with you guys. Yeah, Thank you very much, Mike. Mike. Oh, we'll see you in a few. Stay away to heaven. Let's go, man. Mm -hmm. All right. 
And while he's doing that, I'll, I'll just plug, because I about an hour before we started this Hangout, I just uploaded a video on using a Microsoft Surface tablet for Ooh. traveling voiceover recording. Ooh, so for those of you who've been looking at a good portable solution, because it's got a full-sized proper USB port, and it handles USB audio really well, um, you could go check that out on YouTube, Juan Bagnell YouTube channel. I'll just, you know, I'll just be shameless and whore out my... No, no, no. no. Out there. Shameless is our watchword here. This is the purpose <laughs> of the entire program with shameless plugging. Otherwise, people wouldn't want to come on the show. <laughs> right. Would you just like to hang out with us? No, but you can plug your stuff, so I'm glad you... But, but honestly, and is, while George is finding this thing, I was really impressed with how well it handles hardware. We just need to find some good software for it, and I think Microsoft hmm. will probably have the best portable solution for mobile recording that I've ever seen. Hmm. No, it's, it's, not, it's not crippled by the way the... Uh, it's not sandboxed the way uh, iOS well, is. Well, that's the problem, is we need to get apps that are written specifically for the new Metro UI. Once we have also, more of those... Well, all we have right now are very basic editing, like single-track, uh, note-taking type apps for audio. Yeah. Yeah. But what's kind of awesome is file management is way easier on Windows than it is on Apple. Um, yeah, so and the OS is clearly... Do, you, you can download an MP3 from your email, do whatever you want with it, cut it up, turn it into a WAV file, and then re-upload it via any service that you want to incorporate. Um, it's, it's phenomenal just how much easier it is to get files onto and off of uh, Windows, uh, Windows RT. So once we get a few more apps, then I think the situation is going to look really good. But even right now for auditions, like if all you're going to do is like a 30-second commercial audition, I was very impressed with how well it handled uh, USB audio. Cool, man. Excellent. Thanks for that. Uh, yeah. yeah, definitely check out everything that Juan does. If you if you are into tech and you like seeing tech uh, blogs, <laughs> watch them on YouTube. Then you should be watching Juan's. They're entertaining, and he does he covers stuff that other people don't do. Like he will demonstrate how a speaker sounds on an iPhone, on a phone, or yes. you know, a smartphone, or or a tablet, and he'll actually mic them in a you know the same consistent way, and he'll let yeah. you actually hear what the darn speaker sounds like, which. We can laugh about that all you want, but I use the speaker on my Galaxy S3 oh, every totally. freaking day. Yeah. In the shower, I use it all the time, and it's just barely adequate, you know, for what I want to. You know, <laughs> it matters. You're not carrying a Bluetooth speaker in your pocket all all the time, right? Right. Anyway, I'll I'll get the Harlan plug in real quick before we all turn yes. it here. But uh, he said on Monday's show, you can announce our upcoming Black Friday sale. Where they can, wherein they can save up to one hundred dollars. Ooh, go on to read the rest. But since they are loyal Ewabs viewers, the kitties are going to getting advance notice, and the special sale page will be open as you and Dan are speaking. All wow, they have to do now. is type harlanhogan.com/save in their browser, and voila. They will have a promo code there and all the items that are on sale. Awesome. So if they just go to viewessentials.com, the sale page will not appear. You need to go to harlanhogan.com slash save to get access to that special code. So this is a special early bird offer to them, and some items are limited. Everything, Everyone else will get notice Friday. So you guys get a little advance notice on the deal. Ooh. Go. See, there was a good reason for you to show up tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Look All that. right. <laughs> All right. Well, we got a couple. We have a couple of announcements here. Of course, we want to thank our donors: uh, John Taylor, Susan Roberts, David Smith, Jack DeGalia, Eric Aragoni, uh, who joins us every Sunday and gives us a few bucks. You're a great guy, Eric. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, we got this new console. You can can you put a camera on that thing, George? No, but I will. I'll show you a very, very short unboxing video. If that's not, if three minutes is too long, I won't show it. We can give them the link for that. That's okay, yeah. It's on YouTube. It's on the Facebook group. If you're a fan, you've already seen it by now. And if you're not, you haven't been on the Facebook group. So go over, go to look at the group, look at the video, and you can see what this uh, thing looks like. But it's a cute little board. It's not big. It's actually smaller than the board I replaced uh, with. And uh, but it's an Allen Heath XB. 10 and it's perfect for a voiceover studio in my opinion and even more perfect there for doing uh, e-webs sure. like, <laughs> like ours also if you want one of these amazing e-webs clickers uh, there they are uh, five bucks we'll mail them to you uh, great for you know if you're making a mistake and you 
want to be able to visually find a mistake and you're not doing roll and punch. All participants in eWeb will be receiving a dog clicker in the mail. That's right, because we got a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> we want to get rid of them. But for like five bucks, you order. can have your own personalized. And yeah, soon there'll be ten bucks on eBay. eBay. On eBay. Yes, absolutely. Because with the logo <laughs> changes, those will be collected. And right. also, if you go to uapps.com while you're there, scroll down a little bit further and submit oh, no. your uh, ideas for our best of episode. We really appreciate it. We uh, we're trying to put together a really fun best of episode like we did last year, and we want your submissions to do that because uh, I just I know you guys know what you want to see, and man, I am just uh, too exhausted to uh, at the end of the day to go combing through that many hours. So we're crowdsourcing this baby. Go to uabs.com, fill in the little form, and, and submit your ideas. We would love it to have those by the middle of December or so. And we did a lot of shows this year, so there's there's lots to choose from. Think about some of your favorite moments from the last year, some of the great guests we've had on. Heck, we had Fred Malamet on the show, and we had, oh gosh, we, we had we had Juan Carlos on the show. Yeah, you did. Yeah. That's right. Oh, wow, that's totally true. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll put in five seconds of him there. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's about all you need. Uh, once true. you get that, you know the shtick, and you can move on. It's fine. <laughs> yes. So next week uh, on our show, we have the amazing Wes Dooley. Uh, this interview we've been talking about that George and I did with him back at the end of July, uh, and we finally put it together into a humanly uh, understandable form. Uh, <laughs> but just to see all the microphones in the, in this building is worth it. But Wes has some great things to say about ribbon mics and microphone technology in general, which I think is valuable to all of us. So make sure you show up next week for that. And, of course, we'll have a tip of the week and uh, lots of other stuff. So um, we I, I, what's that? Aaron Sauer, December 9th. That's uh, a, oh, yeah. Me yeah. Karen. That's and, great. That's great. Yeah, um, she's a she's a great gal. We'll have a lot of fun with her, and uh, I think that's going to do it for us. So I'd like to thank, of course, Cliff Zellman. Thank joining us from Tejas, yeah. and and Juan Carlos joining us from Los Angeles. And for uh, back, guys. oh, a pleasure, always a pleasure. We're going to have you on again as often as we can. And Uncle Roy polishing his Emmy there, uh, for joining us oh. from New Jersey. Yeah. Anyway, that's going to do it for us this week. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem behind the curtain here in the West. And together we are East West, East West Audio Body West. Shop. Oh, Have a great week, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Don't eat too much. And we'll see you next Sunday. Not too much latkes. Yeah, that too. <laughs> no, as many as you want. There could never be too many. Bye. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thanks. Same to you. Oops, I forgot to put the end credit uh, video clip in the oh, show. Oh, okay. Well, that's all right. We're playing the, we're playing the, we're playing the music now. Play we're, the Rosemary yeah, dance. Yeah, play them out. Everybody just wave. I'm going to dance with my thumbs. <laughs> we're just seeing the graphic right now. Uh, the logo. Cool. Thanks, everybody, who came relatively spontaneously to this. Yeah. That was awesome. Great yeah. show. Great show. A lot of fun. Yeah. That was a blast. Oh, and you guys might want to kill the live Google feed, too. Oh, I can do that. Thanks, Dan. Stop.